If you're a Mac user and you want to run lights from your computer, you probably go out there and look for programs and you might find there's not near as many out there for Mac as there are for PC. Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to showcase the lighting programs that are available for Mac that I found, tried, tested, and would somewhat recommend. Of course, only one or two of these really gets my top pick, but if you're a Mac user and you're looking to control your lights, I really want to show you all the options available because there's not that many. Um, the reason for this, generally, from what I gather, is that it's a little easier to develop on a PC. There's more PCs in the world. It's a low-cost, um, lower-cost computer if you're looking to dedicate something to a lighting control system. And last but not least, my biggest headache with Apple is that they don't put touchscreens on their computers. And for lighting control, this is often key. Still, if you're a Mac user and you don't want to go out and get some different computer because, let's face it, you don't run lights all the time and it's not the only thing your computer does, then there are some really solid options to run lighting on your Mac. And so, in this video, I'm just going to go through each option. I'm going to show you the ones that I recommend. I'm going to show you some that are not my favorite. And for each console, I'm going to go through the pros and cons as I show you so that you can figure out what the best console will be for you. Let's dive in. If you've been around here on Learn Stage Lighting and on the YouTube channel, you know that this program, DMX is from Entech, is one of my favorites, especially for beginners starting with lighting. And what's not to love about it? It's simple to use, and when you buy it, it's only about 290 bucks or a little more, um, just under $300. When you buy it, you get the DMX output box with it, so you don't have to buy that separate like with other programs. Working in there is really simple. I've got a full tutorial here on YouTube that I'll link to on the side here, but just for a quick intro, you just right-click here, bring in your fixture. You can download more from online if you need to. So we could bring in a couple different fixtures here. And then you're able to just use the faders to control the DMX values. Also built in, if I have a pan and tilt channel, I can select those, use shift or control or, or Apple, since we're on a Mac here, to select them. Then I can use this XY pad to control them. Similarly, there's the sound tracker and the oscillator, which are two ways to build effects. The sound tracker working off the sound source and the oscillator just working off of the time clock. Um, and the BPM is always going to match your music because you set it right here. Or DMX works as a VST plugin, and so you're able to use it with popular DAWs like Ableton Live and others like that to control your lights straight inside those DAWs. Saving your scenes is really as simple as just creating a new bank for each song or uh, each portion of your show, and then saving your presets. Boom, then you're good to go, that's all it takes. Recalling presets is you just click on them, and they're recalled. It's really that simple. And so I really love DMXs because it's easy, it's quick, and if you're used to audio especially, which I know a lot of Mac users are, then this, this idea of just having faders and clicking through and having lots of faders to work with is really ideal and really works well. It's really simple. It's no frills. And as you get to, but when you get to have a lot of fixtures, it can start to get a little bit overwhelming. And so that's about the point when you probably need to move on to something else. But for the basic stuff, if you're running your lights from stage as a band, simple church setup, simple theater setup, uh, DMX is really great. Next up on the list, we've got a little program called QLC Plus. QLC Plus is pretty simple here. I'm just going to go here and uh, create some new fixtures here. Sure, we'll use some SGMs. It's a free program, and so you're going to notice that uh, the interface isn't as nice looking, but at the end of the day, it, it can get the job done. Uh, if the fixture you want isn't built in, I believe you can build them, so it is an option. And uh, you'll, you'll see here, though, that if I want to work with different lights here and just 
turn them on and try to get um, different control. It's not what I found to be the most intuitive thing ever. Um, you can go over to the uh, simple desk, which I happen to like a lot, and control each channel of your light. But at the end of the day, it's just not my pick. Um, you can use any variety of interfaces, though, to control it, such as uh, ArtNet, such as SACN, which is E1.31, DMX to USB, etc. Another option that we've got here on Macs is LightKey. And uh, LightKey is a little more expensive. You pay uh, by year for the amount of channels that you want. And so it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other consoles that I recommend here. But as you can see, it makes up for that in the fact that it's really simple to use. You can check out my full review of light key here. I'll make sure to link to this on the side on YouTube. Um, and you'll see that I really like it. Um, it's a really great program and it enables you to quickly and easily build what you need. It's very Mac friendly. It's not, um, it's not very lighting guy esque. So if you haven't done lighting before, it will probably come pretty simply to you. Again, for, for more info, you'll definitely want to check out my full review because I really do a walkthrough of the whole setup of this interface and, and how easy it is to get everything going. Uh, Light Key is one that I've watched for a long time. It wasn't always this good, but they've definitely turned it into something great. And I think it's worth something that if you want to do a small to mid-sized show, um, you know, and you're not going to have more than, say, 30 lights that's just a in a, a abstract approximate number then light key might be a really good option for you it's really 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 easy to get started really mac-esque that's the biggest thing that i hear from students is that light key if you're a mac person especially is really simple and just walks you through everything you need to do you're never guessing what the next step is because they tell you and they show you and then things are pretty intuitive to build the rest of your show. Index D Pro is kind of their upgrade to DMXs, and it works a lot like a real lighting console per se. You select your lights, you go ahead and you uh, bring them in. You can patch multiple fixtures at a time. Say I've got uh, these LED PAR 56s and I want to do four of them. It's really pretty simple, pretty visual to get started. Once you're done patching things, what can be cool is you can actually set up your stage physically. You can drag out these lights by going into edit mode. And then you can set them up the way that your stage actually is, which could be really helpful. Pop it to monitor live output, and all of a sudden, you've got lights. You can change their colors. You can save them to cues. You can save them to palettes, which are like presets in some consoles. And you're good to go. Ultimately, D-Pro is my pick for people wanting to do a basic or intermediate level console. But when you want, when you crave more of an interface like this, um, it's a little quicker, especially to work with moving lights like we got here and LEDs. Then DMXs is, of course, being able to quickly select multiple lights and work with them, save presets, build those presets and cues, and then bring those cues into this grid that's called show control. It's very stable, which I like a lot. That's one of my pet peeves with some uh, products that I'm not going to mention in this video. And, you know, it just generally works well. It's not flashy, but it's also not expensive. When you buy D-Pro, um, like light key, you're paying for the license and you don't get any actual hardware. So you'll need to buy an ArtNet, an SACN node, or maybe some DMX to USB hardware from NTEC. And so do keep that in mind. But ultimately, it's a really great buy. I've had a lot of people use D-Pro. I've used it and been really happy with it over the long run. So it's a great piece of software. Works well, isn't fancy, but does everything you need. Next, we are brought to the Light Shark. Now, a lot of you guys, if you've followed me here for a while, you know that I love the Light Shark. Why? Because it's simple, it's easy to use, and it doesn't run on a computer. So you might be asking, well, David, if this is a thing about uh, Mac software, why are you showing this? Well, the Light Shark is unique because it runs offline on its own box or console, uh, depending if you get the LS Core or LS1 or maybe something different in the future. But 
you dial in via a web browser. Here I'm dialed in via Safari, and it's not on the internet. It just creates its own network. You can plug in or go wireless, and then you're able to control via a tablet or a computer the whole lighting console. So I can literally just go in here. You know, patching is as simple as going to the patch screen, adding fixtures in from the fixture library, and then you can simply select different lights, adjust intensity, adjust position. If the lights have position, you can do so visually as well as with the individual parameters, as well as make palettes. And then you can save things into cues, which you can play back. There's cue list on the bottom, as well as a nice page of executors, which are uh, button cues and you're able to make a really great show. I really like the light truck because it doesn't run on a computer at all, which makes it um, really awesome, especially for installations or production companies. You don't have to worry about somebody messing up the installation of the software, can mess it up the computer or anything like that. It runs on its own device, and then you just dial in via computer. So if you're a Mac person, this definitely could be worth a look. Next here, we have Camsys. Now, Camsys is pretty popular, and it's not immediately um, obvious because the interface is not my favorite. It's not a great interface on the computer. On the console, it's much better. On the computer, it feels like it's, you know, 20 or 30 years old. Um, maybe it's something they're working on. I don't know. But whatever your thoughts are on the interface, the fact is that in Camsys, you can control a lot of lights. I believe 64 universes totally free out of the computer. There's also pixel mapping available, and it's a professional level lighting console. So if you've used Hogs, if you've used MAs, if you've used Onyx, you'll be used to the workflow, and it's fairly easy to get used to how things roll inside of Camsys. You know, there's unique parts. Every, every console's got its own unique thing, but at the end of the day, it's stable. It does work. It runs on Macs, and you're able to get a lot of output completely free. So if you're a professional, you're looking for a way to run things on your Mac, this could be the way to go. Last but not least, we have Chroma Q Vista. This was formerly Jan's Vista, got bought by Chroma Q the last year. Um, and apparently that's going to be a great thing for him, you know, continuing the uh, legacy. In here, you've got a number of things. There uh, isn't a demo show, it doesn't seem, so I'm going to go ahead and patch some things myself here. But it's really as simple as, as going in, Finding the lights you need. So maybe I'm looking for some uh, Mac Auras. And then you just go ahead and drag them in here. Bloop. It's really that simple to get a bunch of lights into here. You can also use this patch down here to get multiple. Um, you know, one of the things about Vista is, as you guys probably know, it's, it's not my favorite software. I think it's really overpriced. When it first came out, they had some really killer consoles, honestly, that were standalone consoles. Now I think they've got one, maybe, no, maybe they don't have any standalone consoles right now. Um, regardless, you know, I really always wish I had a touchscreen, and on a Mac, you're just not going to have that. Either way, once you get going, you're able to have your different lights here that you're able to control inside of the console. And the, the one credit that I do give Vista is it's fairly easy to get started. Um... For the money, I tell you what, on a Mac, I would probably go with Light Key. If you're looking for something simple, something that's kind of Mac-like, um, Vista somewhat is, but Light Key is a whole lot more intuitive. Um, it looks a lot better. It's easier to navigate. And I think it's something that you would like better, you know, if you're kind of a general Mac user. Not to say that you can't get going. Um, truth be told, I use Vista 2 a little bit. Um, I do a couple shows a year on it. I haven't used Vista 3 a lot outside of testing, but it generally works the same. You're able to apply things like effects here, like I just did, able to apply, you know, select different lights here, give them intensity, give them all kinds of effects, and you're able to see it here in the live tab. At the end of the day, it's not a bad console. I just, I think it's overpriced. You know, that's that's always been my opinion on Vista and it still stands. But whatever console you end up with, whether it's Lightkey, DMXs, or D-Pro, or one of these others, uh, Lightkey, DMXs, and D-Pros are, are really, those three are the three that I recommend the most. But 
Whether you go with one of these consoles or something else, uh, feel free, be sure to subscribe here on Learn Stage Lighting to get more about lighting. And of course, check out the tutorials that I've linked to throughout this video as well as below for all these different consoles and get more information on any of them you might be interested in. Because at the end of the day, I want you to control lights, I want you to do cool stuff, and I want it to be easier for you. I want to shortcut your way to making great lighting. And so let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.